who doesn't want to save money if they can save money. Because I just want to help you out. Like... What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, you may not know that I do live in Seattle. If you aren't new here, you most definitely know that. I've made plenty of videos related to Seattle. Two in particular though, I have found have brought me a lot of questions, which is why I wanted to sit down and answer some of them for you. There are a lot of questions that I can answer about Seattle related everything, but that would take so long. So I think I'm just gonna like make a couple videos um, trying to address all the questions that I think people would have. Feel free to also comment down any questions below that you have. I would be happy to put them in the next video or the one after that, whatever it relates to the most. But for today's video, I'm mainly focusing on what made me move here and how much I did save up and just kind of like some saving tips and tricks, I guess. So it's been about three and a half years since I moved to Seattle and I have no regrets, let me tell you. And I do want to preface everything that I say is obviously like in my circumstance it's my opinions and like not everybody loves seattle and i can't guarantee that you will love seattle if you come but everything is so circumstantial that i can't like you know what i mean it's just kind of like everybody has their own experience and i personally have had just like the best experience and i couldn't be thankful enough that i moved here but i don't want that bias to like sway your opinion, I still think that everybody really needs to do their research and like really dive in before you move somewhere. Or don't and just go, but like I could never do that. Overall, the reason I moved here was mostly to get out of my hometown. I am originally from Oregon, so I didn't really move too far. I grew up in one of those places that it's definitely not small enough that you know everybody. Like it's a pretty fair sized town but I also feel like it's one of those places that if you don't leave by a certain age then you're just gonna get stuck there forever and maybe some people love that but I just can't imagine myself being there for my whole life like that just doesn't sound like a fun time so I wanted to move to something a little bit bigger a little bit like more lively I did have the option to move to Portland um, and I went I worked there for a little bit just to kind of feel the vibe out and everything But like ultimately my goal was always to move to Seattle. I knew from like Maybe my junior year in high school like junior senior year in high school I just had this idea that I really wanted to move to Seattle and I even came up here to um, Scope out the Art Institute because I really wanted to go to the Art Institute for like fashion design but I did come up and I visited and I was like completely overwhelmed like I was 17 I think so I was super overwhelmed and I'm so thankful that I did not move at that time because I would have been so in over my head but I did get to see like what I would be looking forward to and it didn't make me not want to move here I just knew that that was not the right time so like fast forward I don't know however many years and I'm in beauty school and at this point like I knew I wanted to move to Seattle still and I told so many people about it and I feel like at that point I was getting so annoying that people were just like okay we get it like just go please because it was all I ever talked about and then within that time too even a little bit before that I did meet my boyfriend who I live with now who he's from here and he lived here and of course that was like a good push for me it wasn't the reason that I wanted to move because I originally already wanted to live here but obviously like it was just nice knowing that I would know somebody I would have somebody to like hang out with and yeah so basically once I really was dead set on that was when I knew I needed to start saving like I needed to get all my cards in a row and um, and yeah so overall, long story short, I wanted to move to Seattle because I wanted to get out of my hometown. I wanted something new and exciting that wasn't like too new and exciting because I literally just moved up the West Coast. It's really not that much different in terms of everything else that's not the city part. I enjoy all of that because I love all of those parts of the Northwest. And if there's one thing I will tell you if you're thinking about moving to Seattle, just like in general the west coast is the best like it's so amazing and i 
could not be a worse like person to tell you that because I'm such an advocate. <laughs> I'm like that devil on your shoulder of like, do it. It's, it's so worth it. So let's get on to how much I saved. I wanted to have $10,000 in my savings account. Not total, I wanted $10,000 in my savings account. I don't know how much I had to start when I started saving, so I don't really know that number. I'm not saying that that's what you need because I I know plenty of people that had just moved here with like no plan and no money and they just made it work, but I am not super spontaneous. I really like to plan things because I get scared that I'm gonna be homeless or something, I don't know. But yeah, so that was what I wanted. I wanted $10,000 in my savings and I also at the time was working on paying off my student loans. So I had two outstanding loans and my goal was to pay off one of them. But I personally think that you need to have at least six months of like livable income. Rent plus groceries plus just like an estimate. At least give yourself a goal of how much you think is necessary. Like I said before, I know people that didn't have that kind of money and they still made it work. But just like for peace of mind and so you don't have to feel like you need to struggle, I feel like it makes people resent the city because they weren't prepared and they came here and they hate it because it's so expensive and they can't do anything and it's just like, well, I don't know. I don't want that to sound insensitive because obviously it's a lot easier said than done, but I think it's just important to do the research and know what you're getting into, especially when it comes to money because it's, like I said, everybody knows it's not a cheap place to live. But with that comes the wages. The wages are higher here, so it does level out a little bit. So that's something to keep in mind as well. I did move out of the house for the first time when I moved here. So I was in a very fortunate situation to be able to save. I was living at my parents rent free, like I wasn't paying anything, I was just making money at the time. So that was like awesome. And I know not everybody has that, so that kind of will differentiate how long you feel like you need to save. I was lucky enough to be able to save in a fairly quick amount of time. And I think this is totally gonna depend on your lifestyle and like sometimes age, I guess, I don't know. Um, I feel like some people are okay living with others. When I moved here, I lived in a five bedroom house with four other girls and we made it work. And that is like a great way to cut down cost of living is if you live with a bunch of people. If you don't mind living with strangers, it can go really good or really bad. I did immediately go to live by myself after I lived with people because it was a good experience but also like it drove me crazy so it you know it was worth it though it was completely worth it I was paying like nothing so and also with that I will say don't count out Craigslist I feel like a lot of people hate like the idea of Craigslist because it does seem very sketchy and there is some sketchy shit that goes on on there but don't count it out that's how I found where I was living when I first moved here and it was like the house was amazing the location was ideal so you can find stuff on there there's some normal people on there that will get you a good deal so if you're considering living by yourself I do want to let you in on a little like it's not even a secret like it's very public knowledge but I feel like not a lot of people know about it and I also don't know if they have it in all of the states. I just know that they have it here because I participated in it myself. But they have this program that's called the MFTE program. And I'll put some screenshots of everything. But, but if you're willing to go through the tedious work to find an MFTE unit, I highly, highly recommend. It does come with income like threshold. So if you make too much money, then you obviously can't apply. But if you make over the like income threshold, I feel like you'll be okay in general. So this is low income housing and they have a lot of units in a lot of different buildings. It's not just old, like super old crappy buildings. I feel like that's kind of what people assume, but it's really not. I found out about this program through a friend of ours who they were doing it and we're like, that sounds great. So my boyfriend and I both applied when we were living separately and we both got it because we were in that income threshold. It actually goes fairly high. So when you go to the website, you're gonna wanna look out for the income and rent limits. So that's gonna be able to show you, it'll match up your yearly income to like a category basically. So it will place you from anywhere from 40% to 90%. And 
based on that percentile, there will be a certain amount of units available. So once you find your percentile, you're then gonna go to the list of apartments that are available underneath this program. And there's actually quite a lot in a lot of different neighborhoods too. So when you find out your income limit, that's gonna give you a solid set price of how much you're gonna be paying for rent. Um, but like basic utilities, I'm pretty sure are also included in that price. So you'll know how much you're gonna be spending off the bat, and that is the same with every unit that's in that percentile. I hope I'm explaining this in a way that makes sense at all, but yes. So once you find that out, this is gonna be when you're gonna to wanna to look into neighborhoods. And I am gonna make a separate video on all the neighborhoods that I highly recommend that you check into. But this is gonna be where you're gonna to wanna to figure out where you wanna live. So once you get an idea of maybe a couple neighborhoods that you would like to live in, you will go down the list, find what units are available on that, like in that neighborhood. I will say though, that just because it says that there's five units in this apartment building doesn't mean that there's five available units. There's just, that's just how many units in general that there are of this program. So this is where the really tedious part comes in because once you found like maybe a couple neighborhoods, maybe a couple apartments that you wanna look into, now you have to call every <laughs> apartment and ask them if they have available MFT units. If they don't, you ask, okay, what's the likelihood that one will be available in the next couple months? Usually they don't know, but sometimes they might be able to give you an idea. So then you just call down the line. You call every single one that you wanna look at and hope for the best. I will say this is a very competitive program because who doesn't wanna save money if they can save money? But like I said, it is competitive and you might think that you're never gonna get a unit, but people are constantly relocating. They're constantly moving in and out of the city. They're constantly moving in and out of the state. So it's not like people are never gonna move out of these apartments. But yeah, I think I want to say, if I remember correctly, I wanna say I spent two or three weeks just like solid calling places. Um, I called a couple places multiple times just to like, the ones that I really wanted, I called multiple times because things change every day. You never know. Um, so you just have to be on top of it. And then also once you find one, you have to jump on it because it will probably go within the next day if you don't. But yeah, so that is basically this program. I highly recommend looking into it if you have that income threshold. Um, if you have other questions, please feel free to ask and I will leave all the links in the description because I just want to help you out. Like, I feel like not enough people take advantage of it, so please do if you have the opportunity. I really don't want any of this to discourage you if you feel like that's so much to save or if you just feel like it's overwhelming like it is moving is overwhelming and like i said before you don't need to have any of this this was just all that i needed for peace of mind and to feel good about moving if it's what your heart is telling you then just do it and make it work seattle's great people will tell you that seattle sucks and there are parts of it that suck but there's parts of everywhere that suck so i love it so that is why I moved to Seattle and that is how much I saved. I hope that was helpful at all. Like I said, stay tuned for other Seattle related videos. I'm also going to be making like a full like neighborhood tour with videos and things like that coming up. So stay tuned for that. As always, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye!